this is builder and chef Jamie Pendleton and welcome to Sunday Fun Day. That's right, today's the day that when people send me little gifts I'm going to announce the gift on Sundays and I'm going to make the recipe that they have sent me. So today's recipe and gift comes from Doris Geiger from Carson, Mississippi. And uh, Doris writes this, Dear Jamie, here's a little happy and also a recipe from John's grandmother, a great bread to have with a hot cup of coffee. I hope you enjoy them both. Always Mrs. G, which is Doris Geiger, again from Carson, Mississippi. I want to thank Doris, and today her challenge is, um, the challenge is Chewies. I will tell you that while I'm making it, I will be wearing her apron that she made just for me. So here's to Doris. I absolutely love and it. And if you want an apron like this as well, you can get one up here on her link. And I'll post the link right here. So I'm excited about your recipe and your challenge today. And we're going to find out just how good this recipe is. So here's to Doris. Okay, we've got everything, all the ingredients out for Doris's um, recipe. We have our, it calls here for one box of brown sugar but in the recipe come up right here in this corner and i'll show you how i make my homemade brown sugar for pennies on the dollar compared to what you pay for it okay it's just brown sugar and molasses mixed in a mixer bowl but this is my butter rum molasses and i add a little bit of butter rum to it and i'll put that uh, post that link uh, right here now okay so either one box or two and a uh, quarter cups of packed okay we're also going to use four eggs. Uh, Doris doesn't uh, call for this in a recipe, but to bring out the flavor, I am using a couple of dashes of salt. Here I've got my vacuum packed uh, Bisquick. It calls for two cups of Bisquick. It calls for one cup of chopped pecans. And this is probably about more of a half a cup here but that's what I like. So you can add a full cup if you like. They're just very, these are just very expensive. So they are up in Indiana. So um, one cup of coconut. And then here I've got my homemade uh, Myers rum vanilla extract. I'll put that link right here in this corner. And you need a teaspoon of that. And I'm gonna add even some of my homemade coconut extract as well to really punch up that coconut flair all right and i will post that recipe later i don't believe that i uh, ever posted that video i think my computer crashed before i got it on so um so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use the recipe that she sent me for sunday fun day and again we're making it in the apron that she made and you can go to her link at the beginning of the video and um you can get an apron that she's made just for you as well, okay? So go over there and support our uh, moms that are home, uh, working out of their homes because that's important. All right, to make these chewies, we're gonna start out by creaming together the sugar and the eggs. All right, so here's our brown sugar. Let me just move that out of the way here. There we go. And remember, this has been vacuum sealed, so all I have to do is pop that up. Did you hear that? And this is reusable, by the way. And this uh, vacuum sealed like this, and if you put a oxygen absorber in here, just a 50 cc or 100 cc oxygen, oxygen absorber with this vacuum seal, you can probably have this in your food uh, storage for probably up to seven or eight years. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cream together that box. And I would say this is almost equivalent to a box. I'm gonna loosen this up, but look how Look how nice and soft this was. And I made this a couple of weeks ago. This is really, really good. Mmm, and that butter rum. Oh, it smells so good. Let me see if I can't get this out. There we go. A little bit more in here in the bottom. I need some more molasses. So if somebody has a good source for molasses, then just leave me a comment below. Okay, now I'm gonna run this for just a minute and get some of the lumps out. And that's all that it takes. Let me move this a little closer so you can see it a little better. Now I'm just going to drop in here four eggs. A 
Okay, and we're going to cream that together with just a couple of dashes of salt. I just, I love the safe one. It's very slimming. Thank you, Doris. Okay, and while that's creaming together, open my bag of pecans, get that ready. I'm gonna open up my biscuit. You see that vacuum seal? Ooh, smells perfectly good, just like the day I put it in here. Again, this is just the biscuit. And what I did here is I just put the instructions from the biscuit box right here. I just taped it to the canning jar for pancakes, for biscuits or uh, dumplings. Uh, for my version of the dumplings and then I put on here 07 2013 when I vacuum sealed it and again you can put a hundred cc um, oxygen absorber in here and you can just vacuum seal this up you don't even have to have the ring on it but I do so you know so I can get in and out of it you know keep it closed but don't forget to vac to re-vacuum seal this every time and uh, and you don't have to change out the oxygen absorber either um, the oxygen absorber will only work it has a reaction to the metals in there that causes it to rust, which causes it to absorb the oxygen. And this Bisquick mix, uh, vacuum sealed in a canning jar like this, will last probably about maybe three to five years, uh, maybe even longer. So this is great for uh, short-term to long-term food storage, okay? This is a good way of doing it this way. Maybe even longer. And now to that, this is shake. Mm, I smelled that the moment I opened it. Oh, that smells so good. And this is my coconut extract. Can you see the coconut in there? I'm going to put the coconut in here anyway, so that's fine. Oh, that smells good. And then we're going to give our vanilla beans and our Myers rum vanilla. Okay. We're going to add that. So that stuff's strong. You, don't, you probably don't even know the whole teaspoon of that. That stuff's strong stuff there. Okay? Oh, that smells so good. Okay, we've got that blended together. Now we're just going to add a cup of pecans. In my case, a half a cup. Right there we go. All right, and we are going to add in a cup of our coconut. Oh, this looks so good. And now we need two cups of our Bisquick. I can't get my, um, I can't get my measuring cup down in here. So, there's one cup. if we can't get two cups in here. It does have a tendency to pack when it's been vacuum sealed, but trust me, it's perfectly fine. It smells really good. There we go, I'm making a mess. Oh, you're not in my kitchen if you haven't made a mess. Okay. There we go. Crank that up a little bit and show you how that looks. Uh, the equivalent to maybe a banana bread consistency, a sweet, a sweet bread consistency. Now I'm going to read her directions real quick and make sure that I have this correct. Cream sugar and eggs, add bisquick, add vanilla, stir well, add pieces of pecans and coconut, bake well in a greased. Here we go. We have our well greased. I just sprayed this with a little bit of butter flavored Crisco. Uh, well greased 9 by 13 inch pan, bake at 350 degrees. Oops, I forgot to preheat my oven. There we go. So bake in a 350 degree oven for 30 minutes. Enjoy. She says this is oh so good. All right, well we're going to find out. So let's mix this up really well. I'm going to scrape the sides of the bowl a little bit. Give it another run for about 10, 10 20 seconds. And then we're going to fill up our greased pan and we'll be right back. Bread don't, or even like muffins mix too much and it's tough. And we don't want a tough consistency. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to scrape off this paddle because we got some really good pecans in here. We don't want that going to waste at all. No sirree Bob.
Mm. Oh my lord, mmm. I just tasted the batter. I know, I know it's got raw eggs in it, but that taste really delicious. Okay. Now this time I'm following her instructions the best I can. Like I said, I did add a few, a little bit of salt. Salt brings the flavor out in the uh, in your batter. So just a few shakes of salt, always it's a good thing in most cases. But you know I'm the chef that doesn't over salt. So now you just want to draw your spatula through it like this and get the bubbles out. Or you can take and a few pats on the counter like that will bring those bubbles will bring those bubbles to the surface. See them? That'll make for a little bit denser cake. Okay. Now we're going to take this and we're going to take this on over to the oven and slip it in for 30 minutes. Now that's her time. I have a convection oven, so I just um, I'll probably just take a really good look at this at about 20 to 25 minutes, 27 minutes this will probably will be done for me. Now it doesn't say how to tell when it's done, but I'm going to assume, you know, maybe the spring back test or maybe we can stick a toothpick in here and when the center comes out clean, okay? So we're going to figure that out in just a minute. So let's go slip this in our 350 degree oven for approximately 30 minutes. Okay, so I checked this at 30 minutes when the um, timer went off and it wasn't anywhere close to being done. So I'm adding another 15 minutes onto the time and we're just gonna keep checking it about every 10 minutes and see, five to 10 minutes to see how it's doing. But yeah, the center was nowhere done. So we're gonna keep, keep at it. Okay, it went for an extra 11 minutes uh, before the knife inserted, uh, inserted in the center came out clean. So for about 41 minutes then, this took in my convection oven. A regular oven, it probably would have taken about 45 minutes or so. So, and that's just my oven. So that's done, and what we're going to do now is we're gonna let this cool on a wire rack uh, for about maybe a half an hour to an hour. And after supper, we'll come back here. So we've had our uh, homemade chicken and noodle soup. And what we're gonna do is we'll come back here and we'll slice it up and we'll give it a sample bite for you. Unless Jasmine wants to try a hot sample. Mm -hmm. You do? <laughs> I don't know how easy it's gonna cut. It's like a brownie, really. What is this again? It's just called Chewies. That's that's what that's what Doris named it was Chewies. I can't give credit for it, for this recipe for anybody in particular because I don't know where the recipe came from. There we go. She can have nuts, right? No, she can. Right, give that a try and give me one for John. Good. Okay, there you have it. And even Peppy seems to like it. <laughs> Here. Sit. Sit. Mm hmm So do you like that? Mm-hmm. It's hot. It's hard to cut when it's hot, but it's good. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's really sweet. It's kind of like brownies. Mm-hmm. Like a white brownie or something. Mm -hmm. It's really good, that buttered rum um, homemade brown sugar in it, isn't it? That gives it some nice flavor, and the coconut gives it some nice flavor, so. Okay, so my daughter likes it. Let's try my husband, let's see if he likes it. Give it a try, see if you like it. That's good. You like that? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. okay. It's not too heavy in sugar, though, is it? Okay, so I say thank you, Doris, and again, thank you for the apron. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you next Sunday for Sunday Fun Day. Come here, girl. What do you want? What do you want? You want a piece? You want a bite? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Mmm, this one's for me. Mmm. 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 -hmm. That's good. Mmm. Say thank you, Doris. Thank you, Doris. <laughs>